we were talking and we were talking and he said things that I'd never heard before. And they were starting to make me really, really mad. I asked him if he was a Democrat and he just looked at me and he said, why? You think because I'm black that I have to be a Democrat? All I heard in my mind is he just called me stupid because I was a Democrat. Oh my God, I was so mad at this guy. I just wanted to punch him so bad. And then he says to me, you want to go have dinner somewhere else with me? Hi, I'm Kat. And I was the typical Democrat growing up in the Silicon Valley of Northern California. I'd get up in the morning, have CNN in the background, listening to the news while I was getting ready, doing hair and makeup, getting in my car, driving to work where I met up with all my coworkers who did the exact same thing, listen to their news, get in their programming. And then we all kept repeating and parroting what we had heard on the news. Pretty silly, right? But that confirmed everything we thought we knew. It must have been true because we all heard it on different channels. So at the end of the day, It was time to go out and have dinner, go to a restaurant, just kind of exhale, whatever. So one night after work, I go to my friend's restaurant. I'm sitting at the bar and this gorgeous young man came walking into the restaurant. He sat down next to me and we started talking. And in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this guy's really good looking and very smart. And we were talking and we were talking and he said things that I'd never heard before. And they were starting to make me really, really mad. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how angry I was getting. I asked him if he was a Democrat and he just looked at me and he said, why? You think because I'm black that I have to be a Democrat? And, and now that I think about it, wow, that's like the most racist thing that you could ever say to somebody, right? Um, well, no, I guess because most of the black people I work with, uh, are Democrats. So I guess that was a pretty stupid thing to say uh, now that I'm thinking about it. But um, he still kept talking with me. And, and I was thinking, God, this guy must be crazy. Yeah. He goes on to say, there's no such thing as a smart Democrat. At this point, <laughs> I wanted to punch him in the throat. Like that was the meanest thing I had ever heard anybody say to me because I was a Democrat and he just called me stupid. I looked at him and I said, I know a lot of very smart individuals who are Democrats. I know CEOs, I know founders of billion dollar companies who are Democrats and they're not stupid. So I don't understand. Why would you say something so mean? And he goes on to explain to me, he says, well, here's the thing. They might be incredibly smart when it comes to their jobs but they are not educated or smart in black history, history, politics, economics, none of these things. And the reason why I said that is because understand that once a Democrat starts becoming educated in these subjects, it's a natural progression to move over to the right. Well, I didn't hear it any of that explanation. All I heard in my mind is he just called me stupid because I was a Democrat. Oh my God, I was so mad at this guy. I just wanted to punch him so bad. And then he says to me, you want to go have dinner somewhere else with me? And I'm thinking, oh my God, he just flipping called me dumb. And then he invited me out to dinner to go with him to a different restaurant. In my mind, I thought, oh my God, he is just so flipping crazy okay, I'll go have dinner with you, all right? I'm also thinking, he realizes I'm many years older than him. Um, but what the heck, why not, right? Let's just go have fun. So we, we left the restaurant and we went over to, oh, P.F. Chang's, I remember it was. And we were sitting there having dinner at P.F. Chang's and he, he was just saying things I had never heard before. He told me that, he would never belong to the Democrat party because it was the most racist party that um, could ever exist on the planet. And I, I didn't understand because, I mean, I went to school, I heard these 
things that were different than what he was telling me. And I was confused because nobody wants to be on, belong to the party um, that's racist, right? So our relationship actually became one. We continued to date and he continued to tell me things that I had never heard before. And we'd get in big fights, big, big fights. I would yell at him. I would verbally abuse him sometimes because I was so angry that he was telling me these things. And you would hear things fly out of my mouth like, that's your truth, not my truth, right? I mean, how many dumb, dumb, dumb cats have ever said that? Oh, I'm one of them. <laughs> I totally said that. I remember saying that. That's your truth, not my truth. Um, so he, he got a lot of abuse. And all he, all he was was the messenger. He, he, was, he said, you know, it's because I care about you. I want you to know the truth. And, and because I care about you, I don't want you to believe these lies. I, I Because I'm getting to know you, I know you. And you don't like being lied to. None of us do. And, and we've all been lied to for years upon years upon years. We've been lied to. Well, he continued to tell me things I'd never heard before. And I, you know, words came out of my mouth at him like, um, that's not true. <laughs> Even though it was the first time I'd ever heard it before and I've never researched it. So how did I know it wasn't true? Right? <laughs> well, it came to a point where it was making me so angry. I was going to go out there and research and prove him wrong, which I did. I did it behind his back. I didn't want him to know. So every time he told me something, I'd go research it because I'm going to find something on the internet to prove him wrong. Well, <laughs> it was just proving he was right every time I was doing the research. You know, in school, they don't say it was Republican strength. And versus Democrats during the Civil War. No, in school, they tell you the South versus the North. They also uh, don't tell you the truth in, in school. Like we've just been lied to about every single thing. And the more and more I researched and found that he was telling me the truth, of course, I never told him <laughs> he was right. I was never going to admit he was right. He knows he was, but I was never going to tell him that I researched it and found that he was right. Um, but he was. And exactly like what he had told me when we first met, the more information that I was finding and researching, the more I looked into the rabbit holes. And I was going down rabbit holes, too. I mean, I was going down to the Pizzagate rabbit holes. I was getting, getting a little bit crazy there doing my research. And I was slowly feeling myself moving to the right. Just as he said all those years ago, every bit of information that I learned, I was sharing with my other Democrat friends. And you see, this is where you find out who your two friends are. This is how you know. As I was learning, as I was researching, I was sharing with my other Democrat friends some of them completely unfriended me on social media and in life in general. I've had family members um, unfriend me in, in life and on social media. And, uh, you know, it's really hurtful. But, you know, the good news is I have friends who are learning with me. So when I shared information with them, they too were doing their own little bit of research and they were learning along with me and they were moving with me from the dumb, dumb lefts over to those who actually knew the information that are on the right. And those were my two friends. I, I do have friends that are still Democrats. We don't fight over um, politics, but I do hope that one day that I've planted enough seeds in them that they'll eventually uh, come around and, you know, move to the right eventually, but you know, they're going to have to do it in their own time and wake up in their own time. But I truly say that the matrix, the movie, the matrix, that was a documentary. It really was. I look back and I realize I was brainwashed. We were all brainwashed. We were going to work in the Silicon Valley in this bubble. The Silicon Valley is a bubble and we're parroting off of each other. The, the verbiage that we were programmed to believe from Mockingbird Media. Yep. I've done my research on all the 
Operation Mockingbird and, you know, the Operation Paperclip, Looking Glass. I mean, you name it. I have gone down every single rabbit hole. I, I am the Democrat Party's worst nightmare because the 12, 14, 15 people that I moved from the left over to the right, they're all educating their family members, 14 and 15 each. And the more and more and more education that keeps happening, there's not going to be a Democrat party left, I promise. But they lied to me. And I don't like being lied to. I just like anybody who lies to me. The one percenters, all of them. And I am going to be their worst nightmare. I am going to help transition and educate people just for the truth. You know, Right now, we are in a war, but it's not Democrat versus Republican. It's really not. And I'm really afraid for this planet. I really am. Because this is a war between good and evil. And I want to be on the right side of history. And I truly believe that I am. And so I'm really, really glad that you took the time to listen to my video. Because it's very important. It took my other half two years to break through my brainwashing. Two years. He took a verbal abuse from me. And... I just can't imagine those who are still hanging on to that, that matrix, just hanging on to it, not letting it go. I'm worried about them. I really am. I, I, I sometimes I feel like there's just, there's not gonna be any hope for them, but hopefully there's a hope for this world because, you know, people got to wake up. We got to save this world. We got to save this country because the United States of America, we are the last frontier right now. So I, I hope people wake up. I hope you listen to my story and uh, apologize to anybody in the past that ever tried to wake me up in the past. And I was abusive too. <laughs> just got to blame it on the programming. You know, it was the programming, but I'm awake now. I've been awake for about nine years now. And um, that gorgeous young man I met at the bar, <laughs> he and I are still together. He just turned 37 and I'll be 62 in September. <laughs> and, um, I love him dearly and he loves me. And I'll tell you, I am so grateful that he educated me and that he opened my eyes. And uh, he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. And I'm really, truly grateful for him. So thank you. I appreciate you listening to my story. And that was my walk away.